for you. We're ever grateful, God, because today we have a divine appointment with you. God, that we get to sit in your house. God, that we get to fellowship and sup with you. God, that we get to have an encounter and an experience with you. God, that we get to feel your presence, not that we don't feel it any other day, but God, your spirit rests, rules, and abides in this house. And so, God, we're thankful. Thankful, God, that you saw fit that we will wake up this morning. God, we're thankful because some didn't rise from their sleep, God, and have slipped into eternity. But God, we get another chance to get it right with you. And we say thank you. We get another chance to give you glory and honor and praise. And we say thank you. God, we're ever mindful of just how good and how merciful and gracious you are. God, we take you at your word that tells us that surely goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives. God, we're thankful that you continue to bless us beyond measure. So much so that we don't even have room enough to receive it. God, we're thankful, we're thankful, we're thankful. God, because we get to be clothed in our right mind. God, because we have a roof over our head and food on our table. God, we're all dressed in our finest today to give you glory and honor. So we have on our back and we have shoes on our feet God and we're surrounded by a family that loves us God you did that you orchestrated that for us thank you thank you thank you for even just the simplest of things God we're thankful God we honor you today we give you praise and glory and so we invite you in this place God would you have your divine way God, would you move in this place like you have never done so before? God, we're thankful for your men servant who spent time in fellowship with you and we're excited about the word. God, we're thankful for the teaching of wisdom, God. And you told us in your word that if we lack it, we should just ask. And you give it to us freely and liberally, God. So we ask, God, that you would give us a divine strategy, God. God, that you would have your way in this place. God, that we would continue to lift up your name so that all men can be drawn unto you. And so even as we gather on today, what would be considered a special, a special day, a Father's Day, God, we're thankful for the men that you have placed in this house. God, we're thankful for the men that you have placed in our lives. And so God, for every father, every grandfather, every godfather, every uncle, every cousin, every brother, God, that you have placed in our lives, we say thank you. God, would you continue to bless them beyond measure? Would you let them know that they're not alone in the task that you have given them? And God, that you provide for them. And God, that you would show them how much you delight in them. Would you create in them, oh God, a deep sense of trust in you, knowing that they can count on you to help, to lead, and protect those you have given in their charge? God, would you show them how effective prayers of a godly man really are? God, when challenging times push them beyond their limits, God, would you assure them that you can take them further into the realm of impossible impossibility? God, would you show up and would you show out for them today. God, would you demonstrate to them your amazing grace and your forgiveness as they seek to love you and know you with all their heart. God, would you teach them to meet the needs of their children, God, of their family, God, the weight is on their shoulders, but God, you are able to lift and carry the load. God, would you do that and be an ever-present help in time of trouble. God, would you complete any healing of past hurts, God, that they be able to parent and show wisdom and guidance to those that you have placed in their care. God, would you do that for them today? Would you give them a passionate faith and a per persevering spirit, God, and a powerful testimony that overcomes any weakness and doubt? 
God, as you as they wear the armor of God daily and faithfully, God, would you equip them and strengthen them to do just that. God, we'll give you glory. We'll give you honor and we'll give you praise. But God, today we say thank you for them. And we ask that you would have your way in the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Family, I got to say welcome into the house of the Lord. And so I got to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the house, grandfathers, godfathers, uncles, my father's in the house. So I got to say happy Father's Day to him. And so it's good for us to be able to dwell in the house of the Lord and worship together. And I pray that our joyful time together would be one um, that we got to take out this good news and share it with somebody else today. I pray that you have a good time. And so I do see maybe a face or two that I have not seen probably before in a long time. And so we just want to say welcome to you. And we pray that your experience with us will be a joyful one and a fruitful one um, in the Lord. I don't feel, I know who you are, but I don't believe I've seen you in this place before have I not would you just so it's our custom here at Cuff you would you just stand and give us your name so that we can just greet you joyfully this morning my name is Joanna uh-huh okay her name is Joanna and so we pray Joanna that you would have a joyful time in the Lord with us this morning so are we are we ready okay so normally we would get ready to hear the word of the Lord, but because it's Father's Day, fathers, you are going to be treated this morning to a special musical um, selection. And then after that, we will have the word of the Lord this morning.
could certainly take some more there. We're going to have our orchestra yet. It's coming. It's coming. I sense it. I hear it. I feel it. Our orchestra is coming. Happy Father's Day uh, to all the fathers and father figures uh, in the house this morning. As always, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We have a few people in our ranks that are down, uh, not well, and uh, we certainly want to hold them up in prayer. Um, thank God Sister Pat came through her operation. We're grateful to God for that. Amen. Yes, we are. Amen. And I um, want to keep Brother Tony and Sister Carol in prayer and uh, any others that might not be well this morning. Um, I have a good friend of mine and his wife that are here this morning. Melandis, God bless you guys this morning. Good to see you, sir. I'm telling you, it's good to see you. Uh, I was going to call you yesterday, uh, not knowing that I would see you this morning. And uh, that call is past due. Amen. But we're calling now, right? We're, we're calling now. Amen. Yes, we are. Good to see you. Vanessa, congratulate. Can we give Vanessa a standing ovation? She just, can we stand? She just graduated. Praise God. We give God glory. I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but you deserve it. Because you worked hard. God bless you. Keep on going, doing, amen, what you are doing. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 26 and 27. This is wisdom's call number five. This is the fifth installment of this series concerning wisdom. And I believe, and no doubt you will concur, that if there is ever a day and time in which we live in, is that we as fathers, we as fathers need godly wisdom on how to nurture and raise the children and to love our wives uh, to the glory of God. Ain't no time to be playing. Ain't no time for frivolity. Because the devil is going around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And if he gets his fangs in the family, then he's made inroads into the community. I just want you to know, if you don't know already, that the family is the bedrock of the community. Family was here before church. Church exists because of family. And then we call ourselves family, the family of God. And we come in and we worship our Father. But I want to endeavor, praise God this morning, to make this as practical and real. It may even get uncomfortable. So be it. Let's see what the Lord has to say. In the reverend, verse 26 of Proverbs 14, in the reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence, and his children shall always have a place of refuge. Reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord is a fountain of life that one may avoid the snares of death. Men and fathers, if you do it right, 
if you get it right, if you make it right, it will be right. The, the manual for fathers really is the word of God. The manual for life really is the word of God and God has left, I believe, no stone unturned that he has given us, as Peter writes, everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him. This morning I've come to announce what God has pronounced. Praise God. I'm going to get a little scholarly this morning, if I may. I've just come to announce what God has pronounced on the family. There are some things that we observe in society that is somehow a reflection of what's happening in the family. I was privy to a conversation of a young boy, I was going to say a young man, but he's a boy. He's about seven years old. And he was riding in the car with his dad. And they saw a wedding procession. And you know how we do in Bermuda, the, the ribbons and all of that decorating the car. And, and everybody's all dressed up and looking nice. And then you have about nine cars behind you and everybody's tooting. You know how we do. And uh, the young boy saw this. This is, this is something that happened just the other day. And his dad made reference to it. And this is what the boy said. That ain't going to work. He, and, and those terms, that's what he said. That's not going to work. And his dad asked him why. He says, they're going to end up arguing and bickering just like you and mama. I'm, I'm telling you, that's what he said. It ain't going to work. Well, I want to come to you this morning and tell you that it can work. And that ought to be what he saw, the exception rather than the rule. So I say to men this morning all around Bermuda in this house and even around the world, let's fix what's broken. Let's fix it. Let's bring back what's missing. When we observe society and compare it with the scriptures, we are a long ways adrift. Unfortunately, in too many cases, it's not the children's fault. Children mimic adults. Children see what they see, and young boys, largely young boys, want to be like their daddy. Good, bad, or indifferent, that's still my daddy. And they will gravitate to the behavior of their daddy. Just give it time. And so in too many cases, it's really not the children's fault. And some children have never received godly instruction. And some children have never seen a godly example. If that's you, it can change today. Let's fix what's broken. Let's bring back what's missing. Nobody, nobody will deny that there are things broken and missing. If you look at the newspapers and whatever's printed, wherever it's printed, you will see that social groups know that there's something missing because every, everybody's trying to get together to do something positive, which is good. 
But when everybody gets together to do something which is positive, it tells us that there's a lot negative going on. Are you with me this morning? It's quiet up in here. Social groups, you see them all over the place trying to do something that's going to help and benefit. Governments know what's going on. And may I say to you, it seems that every so often new legislation is written to try and help out a situation. Let me tell you something. You can't legislate morality. You can't legislate fidelity. You can't legislate loyalty. You, can't, the, you can write all the laws you want. It won't fix society until society is fixed from within. I'm going to preach this morning. Christians know that some things are broken and some things are missing. I'm going to go a little deeper here. Muslims know. Buddhists know. Agnostics know. Even atheists who don't believe in God know that something is wrong. That something is missing, something fundamental to a healthy society. Something's missing. Some people think nothing's wrong. Because, can I make it plain? Because some people are so used to chaos and confusion that they don't know what's really normal. Where I live and where I work, on a daily basis, I see it and I see it increasing. And it breaks the heart because the children are affected. Oh boy. Just because one is biologically able to make a child, that don't mean you're ready for them. And lastly, let me say to you, the devil knows something's wrong too. Watch this, what God told me. He said, the devil knows and he's laughing. And he's crying at the same time. He's laughing because there are people that won't follow God's way. And he's laughing because that was his downfall. And he's crying at the same time because he's in a situation that he can't get out of. But we are. And so we, we won't deny that there are things that are wrong, there are things that are broken, and there are things that are missing. But I've come to say this morning, Upon close examination, the evidence points to the waning of and the absence of. In some instances, the worship and reverence for God is waning. There are those that used to. There are those that used to go to church. There are many that used to go to church. That Their parents took them, but they never took their children. It's waning. And it's almost epidemic in our society. There's this waning of and the absence of reverence for God and the worship of God. I'm talking about the true and living God. I'm talking about the God who made everything that we see. Everything that we experience, everything that we love, everything that we hold dear. I'm talking about him. I'm talking about the God who put himself in flesh and dwelt among us. I'm talking about the God of creation. The one that men ought to revere and adore and worship and follow and accept the teachings of his son. And come into right relationship with him. And follow his word. And watch the blessings begin to flow into people's lives. Well, it's waning. 
and it's absent in many cases. Can I say to you, if you're watching by Facebook or if you're sitting in this room, every father, let's get it together. If there are some things that are broken and amiss in your life that's affecting the family that does not help to realign the children because when we go off the scene, the children will be left. And the scripture tells us that if I reverence and worship God, confidence is built. Mm. We're going in now. And his children will have a place of refuge. Praise be to God. If you look at chapter 1, verse 8 of Proverbs, and want to tie that in with chapter 14 and verse 26, and I'm just going to flow right into it. It says, my son, chapter 1, verse 8 says, my son, hear the instruction of your father. And if you tie it in, he says, this is just a conversation, he says, hear my instruction. And the instruction is, in the reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord, there is not just confidence, strong, strong confidence. My son, hear the instruction of your father. My son, the door to the school of hard knocks is open. It's open wide. And the invitation to come in, how the enemy, the devil, whoever, likes to lure us in, come in. You'll find it'll be all right. It's not going to be all right. Oh, Jesus. Ooh, I just heard it. Following the devil never has a good outcome. Hear the instruction, the door to the school, and the training, and the uh, uh, instruction that the world gives. And when we uh, 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 fall prey to that door going into that school, it is, is, is difficult. Anybody in here ever been to one class in the school of hard knocks? And you got there and you wish you would have played hooky. <laughs> I wish I would have never taken that class. I know there are some in here who say, I, I wish I would have never taken that class. I wish I would have saw that door open and went right past that door and went where I was supposed to go. Hindsight is always 2020, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, we hear this and we see this. And I say to you this morning that embedded, embedded in reverence and worship for God, confidence comes. Confidence in who God is, Deacon. Confidence in what God can do. It's built in when I revere him and I worship him and I begin to understand his way and I begin to envelop his truth. Confidence is built. And not only, if you look, it says, it's strong confidence. When I see God Again, for who he is. You hear me say this. this. This has to be my one of my favorite scriptures and benedictions. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, God alone wise, be glory and majesty and power forever. That's who God is. And because we can see him, but we see everything that he does every day. No wonder Jeremiah could write in Lamentations, God, I can't see you, but your mercies are new. Every morning I wake up to new mercies. Anybody wake up this morning? Praise God to brand new mercies. You go past 50, you'll understand new mercies. 
<laughs> you just just go past a certain day. You're, all your youngsters in here, you you celebrating, you waving your hands, and you have no problem raising your hands because your arms don't hurt. Wait till you go past 50. <laughs> Listen to me carefully. The, uh, yesterday morning, I was te I, I went like this. This arm went straight up with no problem. This arm came up as far as here. It couldn't move it no more. I said, Lord, what's going on with my left side? Hurt coming all down here. I said, okay, pay attention. But I was so glad that I was able to get up. Yeah. You go past 50, you're glad to get up. Some, I, is anybody listening to what I'm saying this morning? His, when I see God for who he is, a God of grace, a God of mercy, a God of truth, a God of righteousness. He's the creator of all things and he sent his son. To be the propitiation, to be the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. When I see God for who he is, confidence is built. I'm about to run in a minute. I'm getting happy. When I see him for who he is, what's this now? When I know what he's done for me. I have a little quote this morning from one of my favorite authors and Bible scholars and teachers and this great man of God, A.W. Tozer. And he says this, we shall see in the reading that all that God did was for each of us. That the world, listen, the world was made for us and, and, and furnished for us. You know, people always talk, people laugh at me because I'm always talking about food. But you like it when I do. <laughs> you know you do. But when, when, we, when we see all that, that God did for us, when we see the vast variety of everything, not just food, but everything that God has done, He's given salt water for some people that like it and fresh water lakes for some people that like it. You could take your choice and swim in either one. He's given such wonderful variety. All that God did and all that God created and provided was for us. He says, we shall see that all that God did was for each of us. He says, and after you see it, then you can sing. He said, you can sing, for me, thou didst cover thyself with light as with a garment and stretch out the heavens like a curtain and lay the foundations of the earth. He said, that was for us. For me, thou didst appoint the moon for seasons and the sun knows it's going down. For me, thou didst make every beast of the earth after his kind, and every herb bearing seed, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree. For me, oh, this gets deeper now. For me, prophet wrote and psalmist sang, was for me. For me, holy men spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. For me, Christ died, and the redemptive benefits of that death are by the miracle of his present life perpetuated forever. The miracle of his resurrection. Can I repeat that again, please? For me, Christ died. And the redemptive benefits of that death are by the miracle of his present life perpetuated for a couple of weeks, he says, no, perpetuated forever. Yeah. And as efficacious now, it means it still has the same wonderful effect now as on the day he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Meaning nothing's been lost in 2,000 years since the resurrection of Jesus. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead is at work in this building this morning. 
It's at work in the church down the road. It's at work in the church over here. The power of God is available to everyone, everywhere, without limit or reservation. I wish I had a church today. It was for me. I'm, I'll finish this in a minute because my life has changed and changes dramatically when I understand this, that everything that he did was for me. I take it personally and it changes our lives dramatically. I don't argue with people anymore. What are you arguing with people about? What are we fussing for? I've got everything that I need. You don't have to believe this, but if you do believe it, I say to you, if you do believe it, if you embrace it, if you make it your own, it'll make a difference in your life. Hallelujah. I won't finish this. Watch this. And when he arose the third day, it was for me. Glory be to God. I'll finish this in a minute. Someone, someone gave me this book. The book, this little booklet like that. And I know you, you scholars are going to try and get it. And I wish you, I hope you do. It's called The Divine Conquest. Someone gave me that book. It was on my, in my bookcase for maybe... 20 years before I opened it because I, weren't, I wasn't ready for it. The stuff in there is mind-blowing, but very simple. When I opened it, I say to you, it was the right time to get this kind of understanding. Watch this now. When he arose the third day, it was for me. And when he poured out upon the disciples the promised Holy Spirit, it was that he might continue in me. The work he had been doing for me since the morning of creation. Can we take a praise break for, for him and what he has done for us? Hallelujah. When I see who God is, when I know what he's done, when I accept the word as truth, when I have proven his miracles and understand his methods, it builds confidence. Seeing his miracles. Sometimes we see miracles and we don't understand that they are miracles. Sometimes God brings people across our path that we don't understand. And God says, that's your angel. And the Bible says, be careful. Be careful how you entertain strangers. Be careful. Because I might have got, I'm just paraphrasing now. He says, I might have just sent that person by. He says, be careful how you entertain strangers. Because some people have entertained angels and didn't know it. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh boy, I had the unfortunate uh, duty and challenge of eulogizing a young man, he's just older than me, about three weeks ago. And um, we got back from Alaska and we came in and I got a call, family members not well, and I said, okay, I'll go, I went. I knew him, hadn't seen him for a very, very long time, but I knew him. Started to talk to him about the love of God and et cetera, et cetera. And the Lord prompted me to tell him, I'm your angel. I was sent to you. And the things that God did in that room with nobody there. The man, I don't know if I told you this last the other day, was stretched out. And after I ministered to him, he raised up. I'm telling you. And after the ministry, 
I said to him, you can go now. Be at peace. Miracles. Understanding God's methods. Turn, if you would, to the book of Isaiah, chapter 30. One verse. For thus says the Lord God. Verse 15, did I say that? Verse 15, I'm sorry. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel. He says, in returning to me and resting in me, you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence. Trusting confidence. A simple thing like an airline flight. We trust the pilot. Never seen him. Don't know where he's from. All we hear after you get up a certain way up in the air... We're cruising at 35,000 feet. I mean, we hope that it's all right. And, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Enjoy the flight. We trust the plane that everybody has done what they're supposed to do. They've put gas in it. They've checked what they're supposed to check, the tires, everything. And we trust the process. God says... In quietness and in trusting confidence shall be your strength. He says, resting you shall be saved. In quietness and in trusting confidence shall be your strength. And the children of Israel were rebuked because he says, but you would not. You would not. Children see and glean who to turn to when things are rough. Children listen and learn. Children observe and then obey. I've lived long enough, and my dad used to say to me, live long enough and you'll understand some things that everybody's told you didn't make sense at the time, but just live long enough. <laughs> you'll, remember that song, you'll understand it better. We glean and when we learn, and after, after we have, done what we're supposed to do as children, then teenage years come in. Help us, Lord. And children become teenagers and adolescents and adults, and they want to do what they want to do. But if you've trained them right, the Bible says that if you train them up, in the way that they should go. Leave them. Let them get old. When they get old, they shall not depart from it. I'm reminded of the story, the parable of the prodigal son. <laughs> he had everything that is everything. When he said, no, give me mine. I'm, I'm out of here. I'm gone. Give me mine. It, it looked good. A pocket full of money always looks good than a big bank account that you can't see, but you know where it is. Help me, Lord. So he took what he could see and neglected what was hidden for the future. And he went out, and the Bible says he started living a riotous life. You got to like that word, riotous. It really means it was a free-for-all. But sometimes a free-for-all will bring a free fall. And you'll wonder, how come I'm just dropping and dropping and dropping? Anyway, he went out and he ended up feeding swine, which was, in those days, you had hit rock bottom. But somehow, 
the training kicked in. And one day when he was feeding the swine, the memory of what he was taught, watch this now, what he had and what was still there. And he says, I'm, I'm going to pull myself together. I will arise and go back to my father's house. And the father, in all of that, one day looked up and saw his son coming from afar. Never, the Bible never says he started to rebuke him and chastise him and this and that. You know what he says? Where you been? I've been waiting for you. The Bible says he welcomed him with open arms. My son, who was lost, is now found. He's back home. Kill the fatted calf. Hallelujah. Get out that filet mignon out of the, out of the side. Get out that prime rib. Oh, yo, 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 what? I'm just telling you what the Bible said. He said, get the fatted calf. They ate everything. Carl's feet, Carl's hoops. They ate everything. Bring it out. And they said, oh, my son who was lost, come back. Train him up in the way I tell you. I'm a living example of one who was trained early and went out and done my own thing, my own way. Went through the door of the school of hard knocks. But one day I heard a voice. One day I heard a call. One day I received an invitation and said, I will arise. You know why? Because the Bible says if you train them up in the way that they should go when they are old, didn't say how old old was. <laughs> old enough to understand. Old enough to realize I'm tired of these licks out here. They will not depart from it. Children, see and learn and glean. And I will say to you, because of the Father's influence and because of the Father's example of faith and faithfulness, fathers, how are we living? How are we living? Are we setting an example of faith and faithfulness? Sometimes we talk about faith, but there's no faithfulness. Mm. We look at this, we see that there is confidence built in God when I reverently worship and fear him and his word. And he says, and the children will have a place of refuge. It says always, go back to Proverbs 15 and verse 26, please. Does it say there is strong confidence and his children shall always have a place of refuge, a place to go when the storms start coming. And sometimes the storms are ferocious. Sometimes they come out of nowhere. But even if they come out of nowhere, I know that there is somewhere that I can go. Many of you have lived long enough to experience some serious storm. And you knew where to go. And you went there and you, what they said, I'm going to my hideout. I want to show you what the scripture says. Children know there is a person and a place of refuge. Second Samuel chapter 22, verses 1 down to verse 3. Second Samuel 22. Hmm. 
You know, sometimes after the Lord brings us through, all we can do is sing. David spoke to the Lord the words of this song on the day when the Lord delivered him from the hands of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. David was going through a rough time. This was literal. And Saul was trying to get him and his enemies. And he said, this is the, the words to the song. He said, the Lord is my rock of escape from Saul. And my fortress in the wilderness and my deliverer. My God, my rock, in him I take refuge. David knew where to go. If you're watching this morning, do you know where to go? In the time of trouble, in the time when the storm seems to be taking you down and taking you out, do you know where to go? He, my God, my rock in him, I will take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. And look, he uses the word again, my stronghold and my refuge, my savior. You save me from violence. Verse 4, I call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. And I am saved from my enemies. Look at Psalm 61, verses 1 down to verse 4. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed and fainting. This to me is a cry of desperation. My heart is fainting and my heart is overwhelmed. May I say, paraphrasing, I can't take much more of this. Lord, if you don't come through for me, if there's no light at the end of the tunnel, if I don't see my way clear, what am I going to do? He said, lead me. Glory be to God. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. A rock that is too high for me. Look at verse 3. He says, for you have been a shelter and a refuge for me, a strong tower against the adversary. I will dwell in your tabernacle forever. Let me, here's the word now, let me find refuge and trust under, in the shelter of your wings. And then he says, Selah, pause and think calmly of this. Fathers, please hear the heart of a father, the heart of one who prays that if we don't fix what's broken and bring back what's missing, the generation coming behind us are going to be lost because they are going to run to everything that really cannot help. A lot of things bring temporary relief. I'm talking about God bringing permanent relief. He can be your rock and your refuge. He can be the place where you can go and you can, as far as may I say this, chill out. That's what the young people are saying. Or maybe I'm, maybe I'm, they're past that now. I don't know what they're saying much like that. But it means the same thing, that I can go in. The Bible says that the righteous run in and they are safe under the shadow. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide, live in, dwell in, under the shadow of the Almighty. Deuteronomy 33, verse 27, Moses says this to the children of Israel. He says, the eternal God is your refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. You know, the song that we, 
One of the songs we sang this morning, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. When Moses spoke this to the children of Israel, they had been formed as a nation. They had, God had done so many marvelous things, and they disobeyed, and they came and went. They, you know, it's nothing much to change, you know. We come and we go. Some people come and then they go. Some people get on fire. The fire burns out. The water hose comes on. They get cooled off, and then they come back. Let's be faithful and consistent. Let's be faithful and consistent. Be faithful in the good times. Be faithful in the difficult times because the children are watching to see how we're doing what we're doing. The eternal God is, not would be, not could be, not should be. The eternal God is your refuge. And underneath, woo, that means if I fall, the everlasting arms are there. If I falter, and we do, the everlasting arms are there. He picked me up, and he turned me around and placed my feet on solid ground. He's our rock, he's our refuge, and he is our fortress. There are other scriptures in Psalm 46. Verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Fathers, give our children all the love they need. Give our children opportunity for education. Give our, our children opportunities for advancement in a lot of areas. Let them develop their crafts and their skills. Give our children certain freedoms, but some freedoms don't give them. Don't give them. Let them fight. Don't give them. But for goodness sakes, if we give them the love, the education, the opportunity, and give them the freedom, make sure that you give them confidence. And confidence will come from what they see in us at an early age. They will always have a place of refuge. Verse 27, and I'm done. Reverend and worshipful fear of the Lord is what? A fountain of life. Jesus said this in the New Testament. He says, if a man believes in me, out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Oh, we have to do, when we look back over our lives and we thank God that there is a fountain flowing in us, that there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein, and sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. He says, when you revere and worship God, something's going to happen. I can't explain how it goes on. I do know that we can enjoy what goes on. Something on the inside just makes you want to sing when no music's playing. Yeah. Hallelujah. It makes you want to sing when you know you can't hold a note. Praise God. But I sing. Anyhow, my music teacher's looking at me. She knows what's going on. <laughs> well, I, I sing because I'm happy, not because I got notes put together and I can hold a note. I sing because I'm happy, because I'm free, praise God. And he says that something within you, he says, when you revere and worship God, is a fountain of life. And Jesus says, when a man believes in me out of his belly, you'll speak it, you'll talk it, you'll praise it, you'll pray it, you'll dance it, you'll shout it, whatever it is. He says, it's going to flow out of you. He says, it flows out because I have put it in. And it's undeniable. Are you enjoying your walk with God? I hope you are. I hope you are enjoying your walk with God because your walk with God, the joy of your walk with God depends on you. 
Pastor can preach it, pastor can teach it, you can read it, you can pray it, but unless you abide in it to get the benefits from it. Remember, as we revere and worship the Lord, things will be happening and our children will be confident in who the God of their salvation is and they will always have a place of refuge. Father, we thank you this morning. Your word is a lamp and a light, and we thank you for it. Father, would you do something in somebody that's watching or somebody that's listening? Would you do something awesome that comes out of your word? that people would place their feet on the rock of their salvation and declare, I shall not be moved. Father, would you do it in us? Would you do it for us? Would you do it through us and in us that we and our children would be strong in confidence and always have a place of refuge? In the name of Jesus we pray, and for his sake, amen. amen. Would you praise him for his word this morning? take refuge and when you get to experience him for yourself that you really do get to build confidence and take take solace in knowing who he is and so we're thankful for the word of the Lord this morning that when we know it we really should not be moved because his word is true and it's proven itself to be faithful over and over again and so we're thankful for the word this morning we get to prepare now for the presentation of our tithes and offerings this morning as we do that we get to do that joyfully this morning
Heavenly Father, we come before you right now in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. First and foremost, to give you thanks for everything that you've done for us in the past, everything that you're doing for us right now and for what you're about to do. God, because you're, you have so richly blessed us, Lord, we take back just a portion of what you've given to us. Even though it be little to you, it could be used as much, dear Lord. It could be multiplied and be used to, for the extension of your kingdom, if that's your desire. Father, we ask that you bless each and every one of us who gave. But there are among us, Lord, those who couldn't, couldn't give, couldn't afford it. But you know their heart, Lord, and we ask that you would pour out amongst them a double blessing. Lord, we ask that you would use us, and because you have blessed us, to bless others. For all these things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Okay. <laughs> Papa, you should answer her. <laughs> we do have a few um, prayer requests, and then I think Pastor preempted some of my um, announcements, but we'll do what's left, and then we'll get ready to to head out. Um, this one just asks continued prayers for my aunt. Yvonne Pierman, who has, thank God, seen another day. God, we thank you for your mercies. And we hope that she'll be able to see tomorrow, God, with your goodness, your glory, and your grace. God, we ask that you will continue to bless her in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please pray also for Pat Wade Smith. And God, we're just, we don't know what is wrong, but you're already there. And so we, God, we pray that you would send a word. And we ask that you would allow her to have a good day and experience your blessings. And to God be the glory. This one is a prayer request for Sister Sharon Stevens, who's receiving eye surgery um, overseas. Okay. Um, we did hear about Sister um, Pat, who's come through um, back surgery. And so we're thanking God and praising God. We um, happened to see a picture. She's up um, and about so quickly and so soon. And so we pray God's continued healing um, upon her. Um, Sister Ed is, and family are, are traveling, so we ask for safe traveling mercies um, for them. And me? Okay. We ask for safe traveling mercies um, for them and that God will bring them back at the appointed time um, safely. And so we're thankful um, for all that God has done. Here's, 